Sound Sleuth Lab. Testing one, two. Today we're going to build an underwater drop rig. Drop rigs are usually weatherproofed audio recorders that are meant to be placed in the field overnight or even for longer durations in order to capture nature sounds. This one is waterproof and instead of microphones, it uses two hydrophones. We're going to build the hydrophones as part of the whole thing by embedding a piezo cylinder into plastic resin that is the same density or very close to that of water. Then we need a high impedance buffer to pull the signal off the piezo element and feed it to a recorder. The buffer and recorder need to be sealed in a waterproof case and then pass the wires through, but not the water. There's actually two builds, one that can be taken snorkeling or diving and the other that has enough room for a USB battery to have it run for days. I'm quite happy with this build because I don't think there's really anything out there like this available for either the hobbyist or nature recordist. Here are the recorders I'm using. The Sony PCM-A10 is my favorite because it can do 24-bit, 96 kilohertz, and it is super quiet. Then we have a Sony voice recorder. It can do 16-bit, 44.1 kilohertz, and crucially, it has the mic input jack on the top. The A10 has the mic jack on the side, which will require some creativity later as it makes the whole thing wider. Then we have a Tascam DR-05X. These will do 24-bit 96 kilohertz also and run on a USB battery for days. It also has the mic input jack on the top. Now on to the cases that I know will work. First up, the Pelican 1050. It has an inner rubber lining that functions as an O-ring as well. Next up is a Plano waterproof case. This is my preferred choice due to the really nice O-ring seal. I also bought a Harbor Freight knockoff to check it out. It's only 15 bucks, but the supplied O-ring has molding defects. And I bought a few of them, and they all do. It does make a great regular drop rig, but that's going to be a different instructable. Finally, we have a small one intended for diving to put your keys and other small things in it. It has a really good O-ring and seating surface. It won't fit the Sony A10 without a custom 3.5 millimeter jack. And I made this one by flattening the tabs of a normal one and not using the body. The electronics are based on a dual op amp, the OPA1642. We're running it on a 9 volt battery, so we need to create a virtual ground, which we're going to do with two resistors and a filter capacitor. The actual buffers are super simple Unity game buffers with a 1 mega ohm resistor tied to our virtual ground. We go from the op amp to the output jack via a 22 microfarad coupling capacitor to eliminate the DC voltage from the virtual ground. Then there are two 47 ohm resistors to protect the op amp. Here's the complete printed circuit board. On the right side there are connectors for the output jack and the 9 volt battery. VCC is 9 volt positive and ground is negative. Here it is with the output jack and battery leads connected. On to the PZO cylinder. This is the same one from my previous build that uses P48 phantom power. It is silver plated inside and out to allow solder connections and the frequency response goes far above the normal audible range, which is why we want to use it with a 96 kilohertz sampling rate recorder. As mentioned in the instructable, my first choice of Teflon wire didn't work. It wouldn't stick to the epoxy I'm using to seal the wires to the case. So I picked Mogami 2947. This is a twin coaxial cable meant for S-Video. It works great and is easily separated. It also passed both leak checks where my Teflon failed on four attempts. Prep the cable by stripping the outer insulation, twisting the shield and pulling to the side. We need to solder this to the PZO cylinder such that the wire is centered for molding. After sizing, strip the center conductor, tin it and the shield. Now tin the PZO cylinder on the inner and outer silver plating. Then solder the center conductor to the outside and the shield to the inside. Inspect your work. Now we need to form an external ground connection. We only need one of these per pair of transducers. This prevents hum and buzz when using the hydrophones. I learned this the hard way on my first build. We're using solid copper wire with a small loop bent into it. Tin this end 
Then tin the shield close to the outer insulation. Now solder the ground lead. Here's the silicone mold we're using. This is intended for chocolate candy eggs. It works really well, peels right off after the plastic resin sets. Note that this wire is the Teflon one, but you get the idea. Now here's the Mogami wired one ready to embed. Mix equal parts of A and B resin by volume. I'm showing 160 milliliters here, but I learned that mixing 80 milliliters total and doing each pour one at a time is the way to go. It is much easier. Here's the pour, and a few minutes later, what it looks like as it sets up. This is the second pour for the hydrophone without the ground wire. Note the overflow. This breaks off really easily from the mold once everything is sent. Here's the two minute compressed into a few seconds of it setting up. Here are the hydrophones after molding, showing the overpour rings before removing them. Now we need to drill two small holes into the bottom of the dive case and the side of the waterproof case. These should be just larger than the wire. Then lightly sand the area around the holes with 220 grit sandpaper to roughen it up. This ensures the epoxy sticks. Clean the area with isopropyl alcohol and wipe down the wires as well. Insert enough wire so that it sticks out a couple inches past the end. Mark the wire on the outside, then pull through further so that the marked area is accessible. We're going to coat the wires with a blob of silicone seal, then pull them back through so that a small amount of the silicone seal is pulled into the hole, sealing it from the inside. This will let us pour epoxy on the other side to seal the wire to the case. Very similar, but probably easier to see, is our Plano or Pelican waterproof case build. Same thing, rough in the area where the holes are drilled with sandpaper. Pull the wires through with enough left to easily cut back, strip, and connect the printed circuit board. Clean them with isopropyl, then put a glob of silicon seal on the inside part of the wire. Pull this back through to allow some to be pulled into the hole. Adjust it if necessary and let dry for 24 hours. Now using some cardstock from an index card, make a mold that we can fill with epoxy around the wire protrusion. The mold should be about 3 eighths of an inch or 10 millimeters tall. I used hot glue to seal it around the edges. Now mix up enough 5 minute epoxy that we can fill the moat. Do not use the casting resin. It won't stick to the plastic, well it might at first, and then it's going to pull away. Trust me, I tried this. And you should wear nitrile gloves for this part, which I am not. The 5 minute epoxy will clean off with isopropyl alcohol if you spill some or get some on your fingers. We're going to do the same thing for the dive container. This one is more of just a corner to fill with epoxy, but the process is the same. Leak testing. This is the most important thing. After the epoxy sets, we need to perform a leak check. I did this in my swimming pool for 24 hours. First up, the dive case. Yes, success. Now up, the Plano case. And winner, winner, chicken dinner, it also passed. On to the circuit board connections. We have a 9 volt battery, PCO transducer inputs, and signal out to the recorder. We're making a custom 3.5 millimeter jack for the dive case in the Sony recorder. This lets us plug into the side of the Sony. Basically, flatten the connections for the tip ring and sleeve, and then cut away most of the sleeve connection. 
then tin and solder to a short piece of Mogami W2697 wire. Here's the board with the output jack and the 9 volt battery lead connected. Let's make sure this fits in the case with the Sony recorder, and it does. Now we need to connect the actual hydrophones. The printed circuit board will fit above the recorder for the dive case and on top of the recorder for the Plano case. Prep the wires and twist the shields together. We're going to use a short common ground wire to connect the shield to the printed circuit board. Here's the final printed circuit board assembly. We're going to coat the whole thing with liquid electrical tape, but first we need to test it. Connect the 9 volt battery, a recorder, and a set of headphones. You will hear a bit of AC hum because we're not fully grounded in water yet. Now let's do the same for the Plano case rig. Put the USB battery and recorder into it to ensure that you get the printed circuit board placement correct. The 9 volt battery will go on the bottom. Power the recorder on after connecting the battery input jack and a pair of headphones. Adjust the input level to less than halfway or so. Now on to the coating with liquid electrical tape. The most important thing to do here is put down some protection for your workspace. I'm using plastic grocery bags. Liberally brush on a thick coat of this while ensuring that you get the exposed wiring of the signal cables and the entire printed circuit board. First up is the Plano Pelican case. Now the dive case. For this one, we also need to cover the 3.5 millimeter jack. After the top is dry on the printed circuit board, flip them over and coat the bottom. Don't worry about any strands coming off. We will pull those off at the end. When both sides are dry, inspect everything, pull off any loose ends that dripped, and we are ready to go. I went through two builds here, the Pelican Plano case built using the Tascam recorder, a USB battery, and a large memory card, and this can be hidden at the edge of a pond or a lake and run for days. The smaller dive case with a Sony recorder can be taken snorkeling or diving and will run for hours on a full charge. Which one you build is up to you. Here's a couple snippets of audio, and I'm going to do a follow-up video on how to use these, as this video is already quite long. There really isn't anything else quite like this out there for nature recording. I hope you really enjoy this build.